Ever since Java Edition Classic, we have had caves. To begin with, they were very clustered, but weren't too dissimilar to how they are today. In release 1.4, bats were added to give a little more life to caves. In 1.7, we were given a tweak to cave generation, which made them less dense. And in 1.8, we got new stone variants. Also, in 1.13, we were introduced to underwater cave generation. We also got a few tweaks to cave generation in the nether. But still, as 1.15 approaches, we have been asking for a cave update. It has over 10,000 votes on the feedback website and over 320 million results on Google and YouTube. So as I jump on the bandwagon, here are my suggestions for a future Minecraft cave update. Hello there everybody, my name is Toby from the Artorvian channel and welcome to episode 8 of Let's Add. Today guys I am adding brand new things for caves and to begin with I would add smoother cave generation. Now this would take advantage of the new stairs and slabs for stone, andesite, diorite and granite added in 1.14 and as you can see it just makes caves a lot smoother. While this would be difficult to implement, it would definitely be worthwhile as it makes caves look a lot prettier and it would also be a nice way to gain stairs and slabs through natural means. As well as this, I would add speleothems and these are basically cave features such as stalagmites and stalactites. As you can see we have some smaller stalagmites and stalactites, we also have some medium sized ones here and here and then there are some of the larger ones. There are even some interconnected ones such as this one here. And this will definitely bring caves to life. As you can see it fills up a lot of the space and it's a nice fun thing to maneuver. And these are just some of the variants of speleothems. There's stone, diorite, andesite, ice and granite. And this would be how you craft them using the required resources. And as well as smaller speleothems, we could have columns. Now this was suggested by starting out in my Discord server. Which, you, as you'll soon find out, is the best place to suggest things. I would definitely recommend joining it. Link is in the description and you can give me suggestions for any kind of video or series I am doing in the future. Now columns would generate in larger caves and ravines and they would consist of very large cave systems which often interconnect and form gaps within the caves. For my next suggestion I would add frozen caves and these would generate in any cold biomes such as tigers, snowy plains and ice spikes biomes. They would consist of icy stalagmites and ice hidden in the walls of snow. As well as this, you may be able to find loot chests with blue ice, ice, bones, rotten flesh and enchanted books such as Frostwalker and Silk Touch. As well as this, the Illusioner may be able to spawn on occasion in these biomes and they would be a nice way to implement the Illusioner as a new feature in the game. And if you didn't know, the Illusioner was actually added in 1.10 but there's no way for it to generate naturally. It could also possibly spawn instead of evokers in raids for snowy tiger villages. Next up we have jungle caves and these similarly to the ice caves would spawn only in jungle biomes. They could spawn above and below ground and they would contain ferns, coarse dirt, mossy cobblestone and cobblestone as well as a brand new plant, moss. Now this was suggested by starting out once again in my discord server. It could generate in any biome but mostly underground and it could be used to craft mossy cobblestone when in a ring around a single cobblestone block in a crafting table. As well as this on rare occasion there could be loot chests in jungle biomes filled with leather, bones, ferns and enchanted books such as this one which has thorns 3. This would be a nice feature as it looks very natural and overgrown and it only generates in the jungle biome so it's a nice rare feature to come across. And for my third and final underground cave design we have the desert cave. Now this would consist of sandstone, sand, coarse dirt, dead bushes and even on occasion loot chests which could contain emeralds, sand, bones and even rubies. And if they were to generate under badlands or mesa biomes, then instead of sandstone and sand, it would have red sand and red sandstone, and terracotta instead of coarse dirt. 
My next suggestion came once again from Crafty Masters in my Discord server. He suggested things such as new ores, some of which are more common than the current ones, and some of which are a lot rarer. The first one would be rubies, and similarly to emeralds, they would only spawn in specific biomes. For example, they could spawn only in swamps and jungle biomes. This would be a lot rarer than diamond, and if you didn't know, it was actually originally going to be added into the game before it was replaced last minute with the emerald. Instead of trading with villagers, you would be able to make ruby tools and armour, which would be slightly stronger than diamond. It would be a bit more common than emerald, and it would be a lot faster than diamond tools. However, it would lose durability very, very quickly. As you can see from these four, I got 16 ruby gems. Next up we have copper and this has been suggested by loads of people and it's in loads of different mods and mod packs. You would be able to make copper tools which would be worse than iron since this would generate slightly more frequently but it would still be a worthwhile tool if you got it just before you found enough iron. As you can see you get a lot of copper from it however the durability does run out a lot quicker and it does mine a tiny bit slower than iron. Next up we have sapphire and this would be the rarest resource in the game. It would be so much rarer than diamond and to have a full set of sapphire armour would be quite an achievement. It would have tear shaped gems and you would be able to make sapphire armour and tools which is a lot better than diamond tools. As you can see it mines this up super quickly and for my final suggestion on ores we would be able to have purple generate in end biomes. This would generate in random veins on single floating islands that aren't on the main end island. They would be able to make purple tools however they would be a very rare drop. If I mine these up as you can see I only got one purple shard from that and if we were to mine up this whole stack of purple ore you would see you would get very little purple. You would be able to mine it up very quickly and it would be fairly common but you wouldn't get much purple from it as it's not 100% drop chance unless you have fortune. This would create purple tools and armour which while it would be a lot worse than diamond and only around as good as iron, it wouldn't lose durability, it would make you immune to projectiles and it would give you protection against, uh, against debuffs such as levitation. As you can see from that stack I only got 25 which is a lot less common than things such as iron and diamond. Next up I would add gold into the nether. Now in the nether there is a lot of netherrack and nether quartz. However, what do most nether mobs drop such as zombie pigmen? They drop gold nuggets and also gold ingots have a chance to generate in nether fortresses. But where did this gold come from? I propose to add gold to be a lot more common in in the nether and you can find it in small clusters of gold ore in above and below ground in the nether. As well as this I would add ores integrated into other rocks if a vein of a specific ore ends up colliding with that block. As you can see I've got a vein of iron ore here that cl clashes with the diorite and as you can see iron actually begins to generate within the diorite itself. Next up I would add cave mobs. Now. These are just normal zombies and skeletons. They do not have any buffs and debuffs, apart from the fact if they spawn in a cave biome, they will have a similar appearance to the cave itself. As you can see, the creeper blends in really well, and it would be difficult to spot on its own. As well as this, the zombies would still burn in daylight and similar things, however, they do appear as though they are made of stone themselves and it would just be a lot more hidden and a lot harder to see. And the same thing goes with skeletons which are just as difficult to see. As you can see they've got a few different features, for example the skeleton has a crack in its skull, but, but for the most part they all have the same features and the same design as normal overworld mobs. Next up I would add crystal caves and this would be an extremely rare underground biome that can spawn with crystals in them. Now crystals wouldn't have too many purposes, they are transparent so they would make good windows and they also look very nice and pretty. But one 
but one purpose they could have is to colour redstone lamps. This would be a lovely way to add coloured lighting in Minecraft and I really wish that was a feature in the game. And for our penultimate design we have an underground villager camp. As you can see it has special underground miner villagers who have head torches and similar mining gear. They could occasionally come with, with uncovered fossils and tents as well as things like TNT minecarts and other minecarts. They could spawn with campfires and blast furnaces, minecarts and chests filled with gold, iron, enchantments, leather, coal and even armour like leather boots or bread and lanterns. As well as this they could have cartography tables, beds and loads of different workbenches unique to these villagers. As well as this they could have cauldrons and just loads of different features that make the cave seem more explored. The mining villagers would have different trades, for example they could trade iron, copper, coal and lots of ores as well as tools and enchantments for emeralds and even rubies. And last but not least I would add the miner's helmet. Now this would be created with 5 pieces of iron, 2 pieces of leather and a torch. And when equipped they would they would allow you to see a lot better in cave biomes. Now imagine the cave is a lot darker than it seems. I wasn't able to replicate this myself, but now let's put on the miner's helmet. As you can see we have a nice torch beam which follows us as we walk. This is similar to ambient lighting which is added in Optifine where you carry things such as torches and lanterns and the light source follows you in dark situations. As you can see it's extremely atmospheric it, it's hard to see what's going on ahead however it does replace torches if you run out and you still want to explore the cave. It makes caves very ominous and it is a very very nice feature. However, if you turn it off, it removes it entirely. And there you have it. If you did enjoy this video, please, as usual, leave any suggestions down below. I'm always welcome to set suggestions for features in Let's Add videos. As well as this, please feel free to join my Discord linked in the description. I've only recently released it, and I, so I don't have too many members, and it allows you to make your suggestions seen by me a lot easier, so please join it if you really want to. Anyway, thank you for watching, I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time, goodbye.